Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back once again to our Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity webinar series where we focus on workplace mental health. As a reminder, as always, so I don't forget and get in trouble like I always do, there's a Q&A box on the top of your screen, and you can submit your questions at any time throughout our presentation today, and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. And if you haven't already, please make sure you sign up for our emails from our mission michigan.gov slash workplace mental health page site also includes all of the previous recordings we've done it'll have this one in a couple of days and if you're on our email list that'll get emailed out to you as well and we have other resources that we post there too and as you all know our goal is really to provide working people and employers with information about issues impacting our workplaces including the impacts to our mental health and options for addressing those issues and looking at those three pillars I've been talking about being in the workplace, affecting the workplace and individual behavioral health supports, we try to make sure that we hit on these pillars with various content of our webinars throughout the series. And as you've seen in our work and in our webinars, you hear us often talk about this concept of trauma. And one, one of the things causing trauma on all of our lists is, uh, I guess I, that was from last month, everybody. Let me regroup. I've never done that before. Um, with what we talked about last month, so go check out that, re that recording. But what we're talking about today is really, really important. It's really cool. We're heading into the holiday season, uh, talking with our my coworkers and our friends. Like for some of us, we're like, yes, it's the holidays. And others are like, ugh, it's the holidays. And this creates uh, some opportunities for us to learn and it creates stress for us as we kind of uh, manage our way through the holidays. So it's a wonderful time of year. Thankfully, there's no snow for us. Uh, which I'm really happy about, maybe not everybody else, but it's going to create that stress and anxiety for all of us as we dive into the holidays. So before we get into what our guest today is going to talk about, just the overall stress and anxiety it creates for us as individuals, I do want to remind everybody watching, this is a challenging time in the workplace as well. So from a workplace safety and health perspective, we do see an increase in workplace injuries, and that's partly because of what we're going to talk about and many of the distractions that go along with the holidays when we're thinking about other things that we have to do in places that we have to be. And for many employers, you might be expanding your workforce during this period to manage increases in activity, shipping, production, uh, customers, you name it. So you're going to have a lot of newer employees that aren't always in the workplace and don't maybe recognize all of the hazards that they're facing. So you want to make sure you're thinking about that extra training. And as coworkers, we want to think about newer people and making sure we're doing what we can do to keep them safe in the workplace. To help us shape our thinking on this, our expert today, Dr. Michelle Reba, with the Eisenberg Depression Center at the University of Michigan, has been a truly great asset to all of our work that we've been doing. And as a psychiatrist, Dr. Reba's expertise definitely touches on all of the areas of our work and all of the things we're gonna talk about today. So I'm looking forward to this webinar so much because I'm more of a, ugh, it's a holidays kind of person and the challenges that go along with it. So I'll turn it over to you, Dr. Reba. Well, thank you so much, Sean. It's really been a pleasure working with you over the last couple of years on a number of fronts, and you were a great speaker at our workplace conference last, uh, last summer, so thank you so much. And I also want to thank um, your whole team in helping to organize the session today. So uh, with that, um, it's a pleasure to speak with you all this afternoon about holiday stress. And the third, um, Sean, you were talking about the two ideas. One is to say, uh, and one is people are happy. Or the other thing is that people sometimes look like they're happy, but they're feeling uh inside. So, you know, so this is an interesting topic. Before we begin, I thought we might take about a couple of seconds here and for each of you to think about this topic for yourself, for you yourself um, and the workplace and, and, and how it is for you. Um, so uh, let's begin. So this is an outline of the next uh, 20 minutes or so. I'll give you some data. I know Sean likes data about things. So uh, we'll talk about uh, data about mental health and the workplace. Then we'll talk about stress, the holidays and stress, and then how we can perhaps think about making this more meaningful. It's a big leap in making changes uh, for all of us. So maybe we can start by thinking about it. 
So here's some of the data. It may surprise you to know, but mental health problems are the most common reasons for work absences. You know, um, sometimes you think about injuries, physical injuries, or um, other problems, but it's about mental health that keeps many of us away from work. And why is that? It, it has to do with the prevalence of mental health conditions in all of us. So here in the United States, about 40 million of us have, as adults, have anxiety disorders, although anxiety disorders often start in childhood and, and teenage years. Um, about 17 million of us have depression. And as I tell uh, many people, depression and anxiety track together. So it's even more of us who have both. And then if you add substance use disorders, bipolar disorders, schizophrenia, personality issues, um, many of us have mental health conditions. And interestingly, for those of us who have serious mental conditions, such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, schizoaffect disorder, uh, many of us with those conditions are working full time. So uh, it's no surprise to think that many of us have problems at work because many workplaces don't really attend or help us get through life working and having serious mental health conditions. So what's the impact of men having a mental health uh, condition at work. So since so many of us have it, well, uh, many of us have to take uh, days off as we talked about absences. And this is probably underreported because people often um, call in and say they have a backache or a headache, some physical condition when it's really me a mental health problem. Uh, there's a large cost to having a uh, a mental health condition and lost work days due to depression and anxiety, both in the United States and worldwide. Uh, so it, it's being non-productive at work, being, being not optimally working at work, but also being away from work that costs so much money. Um, and to that issue about not performing, what, what's the problem with having a work, uh, a mental health condition at work? Well, it may mean that you're not cognitively intact 100%, either because of the medication or you're not getting good sleep at night because of the mental health condition, or you're anxious or depressed. Um, and it's interesting to note that many of us, at least 50% of us who leave a previous job are leaving because of a mental health uh, situation. So it's a it's an opportunity for us both indirect and direct costs. I'm using the word cost not just in money, but in impact on us emotionally and physically in the workplace and out of the workplace for us to look at this condition, mental health at work, and trying to optimize it uh, for the employee and the employer. So now let's move into stress because that's a topic of this uh, workplace and holiday stress. So in the workplace, the number one cause of, for people, the, the number one cause of life stress is the workplace. So it's pretty circular. And, um, and it's important to address this, not just because of the workplace condition, but because stress, life stress, stress interdigitates with all these medical conditions, heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, depression, anxiety disorders, etc. So, so if you're very stressed at work, it's going to impact on all these conditions, which many of us have. So it's important from that respect as well. And I should note that stress itself really isn't a, a medical condition. So I'm not really defining it here. It's whatever you think is stressful for you. 
And according to the American Institute of Stress, many of us feel stress. A third of us feel extreme stress, in fact. Two, thir two thirds of us say that uh, stress affects physical our physical health. And two thirds of us say that it affects our mental health. And probably there's a crossover as well, both physical and mental. And it affects us in terms of sleeping. So almost 50% of us say that stress is keeping us from having an, a good night's sleep. So again, if you're not having a good night's sleep, it's going to affect your work productivity the next day or days after. So it's all pretty, you know, chicken and egg here. And what are some of the common symptoms of stress if you feel stress? So look at this. You know, irritability and anger, having low energy or fatigue, not being motivated, uh, having headaches, uh, feeling sad or depressed. You have GI problems, indigestion, acid reflux. You're feeling tense. You're, you're feeling, you know, your your teeth are, uh, you know, are clenching, and you have appetite changes. And if we talked about if I went over clinical depression today, which I'm not because we don't have enough time, but if I did, all of these symptoms are the same as having depression. So it's really hard for people to figure out whether they're just stressed or they have stress and depression. And that's why it's important to talk it over with your family and uh, with your doctors about this uh, because it really could mask one for the other. I do a lot of work uh, in terms of talking about heart disease and stress and depression to medical audiences. And this is a just an ad from a cardiology practice that stress is your own worst enemy. And, you know, it impacts on um, disorders such as heart attacks, strokes and high blood pressure. So, again, reinforcing that this is so important. So let's move now into the holiday situation because that's the focus of this. So what month do you think we in the United States feel is the most stressful? What month? Sean, what do you think? Well, I had the cheat sheet, but I would say that for me in particular, it's probably the fall. Well, okay. okay. We can find out why more later, maybe. But for most Americans, as you can see here, it's December, highest, highest month in general for most of us. Okay, so November and December, pretty high. So what makes the holidays so stressful at work? Because that's what we're focusing on today, work. So oftentimes, depending on what you're doing and where you're working, there's a lot of demands for end of the year, you know, closing out the end of the year on uh, on different, um, you know, different projects or financials. Often there's a lot of overtime at, at the end of December because other people are taking trying to take vacation and going away. So others of us are being asked for for us in mental health. It's our uh, busy season. <laughs> so so we are. It's very hard for us to take time off at this time because, you know, many, many people want to come in for care. As Sean mentioned before, there are safety concerns because as you're working longer hours and maybe you're fatigued or, you know, going to parties the night before, um, that's when safety becomes a major concern. Also, your many, many organizations are hiring extra help and temporary employees who may not know exactly how the operation runs. So there's also safety concerns and you may not know your partners or people who are working there. Um, for those of us who are living in Michigan, we're leaving in the morning when it's dark, we're coming home when it's dark, and that affects our mood and increases stress. Again, productivity fizzles about mid-December. Everybody's sort of, you know, like in school, no kids don't study or, you know, they're not attending. And the same for us. We all have holiday chores, whether we're cooking or baking or we're buying presents or we're volunteering um, 
So at the end of the day, many of us are not going home, but going someplace to shop, to help out, uh, to check on people. More parties, late night events. Uh, if we have school age kids, they're having concerts or, you know, um, uh, sports activities. Um, many of us are drinking a little bit too much. Those of us who are working at home, you know, it's hard to um, have kids at home uh, when when they they start their vacations sort of in mid December. They have more time away from school, so it's hard for us who are working at home. Uh, as Sean pointed out the weather, so we always have to look at the weather and how to dress our kids, dress ourselves, and take longer to get to work or getting home from work. And then many of us are worried about layoffs at this time of year, depending on um, you know how you're working and where you're working. So there's a lot more stress that's going on, uh, certainly at this time of year. And then personally, you know, we're not getting as much sleep. We're probably eating carbs, <laughs> which are delicious, maybe exercising less, not getting to the gym enough. And that's true for me. Uh, lots of us go away. We forget our medications. Um, lots of worries about family and then the traditions, you know, which are often very great, but sometimes hard. You know, I know many families who have to eat I don't know if it have to, but they do eat two turkey dinners or they have to, you know, make sure they get to different families and, you know, and, and eat more. Uh, many people, um, you know, remember the holidays of uh, days gone by and remember our family members or friends who are no longer with us go to the cemetery, maybe. So this is a hard time of year for many of us. Certainly there's less relaxation. I don't know that many people who who are looking forward to relaxing um, and making resolutions that I think many of us don't really live up to. So that's stressful as well. And as you know, we're pointing out at work, if you're stressed, um, if there are individual stressors as well as job issues that leads to injury and illness. So, you know, this is particularly important um, for managers and all of us as employees about stress around. We sometimes we're taking shortcuts to leave early and, um, you know, not checking equipment as well as we might or our, we have disattention to some of the things that we usually attend to very well. So around the holidays, we're spending more time traveling, spending more money, shopping and returning, even if we're, you know, ordering online. You know, if you go to the um, post office, many people are sitting there with many, many boxes of things they're returning. Sometimes we question our values about all this. Is this the way we really want to spend our time and our monies? There are an awful lot of people who are lonely and anxious and depressed and women, <clears throat> many, many women feel that they have the brunt of the work around the holidays. So there may be some gender um, issues um, and disparities in general around the holidays, depending on finances and, you know, other aspects of life. So when we think about what we can do to make this less stressful here are some ideas and you know i think this is where we maybe can have some great discussions but managers could reach out let me just get some water okay. sorry so managers can reach out to their employees and ask how they might want to celebrate the holidays at work you know instead of thinking about having another holiday party, you know, what what can we do and to help? And sometimes it's just about time, giving back a time, an hour, a half a day, maybe celebrating the holidays later in January, maybe a good idea. But I think the most important thing here is to get everybody to uh, think about it and participating in the discussion about this bringing more communication and awareness about stress and 
what can we in our own small way um, help? You know, every voice matters in this. And I think that's that's a key concept to making the holidays less stressful. Um, looking at workloads and project deadlines and not dumping something big on somebody, you know, on December 20th. And what are the resources that are available at your, you know, employee assistance program or locally in your community about this? So really thinking about this and most importantly, you know, time, you know, giving a gift of time and conversations about this. And then personally, you know, what can you do to help yourself or friends at work? You know, maybe taking a walk like a beautiful day like today might be a good idea. Half the half of lunch might be a walk and half the other time, you know, eating your lunch. But detaching from work is important. I'm a I'm a, you know, I'm not good at this. I sit at my desk and eat lunch and do notes. I, I think that's a very bad habit. It's bad from a physiological habit and a, you know, it's bad from a mental health habit. So, you know, if I was going to pick one thing up this list, that's what I would, you know, try to do, get up more. The screen time and computer and social media. Um, you know, really, we're all glued to our phones um, and our computers all day, and that's not healthy. And, you know, we tell our kids not to do that, and, you know, many of us do it as well. It's not good to go to sleep with your phone or wake up with your phone. Um, so trying to minimize that and really con you have to concentrate on, on how to do this because it's not easy. We're all attached. Sleep is a key aspect here. So are you getting enough sleep during this period of time, both quality and quantity? And, you know, not just checking your watch, but really when you wake up, you know, really questioning yourself if you're tired, if you got your seven or eight hours of sleep, not five or six, and, um, and um, you know, really, really trying to quantify that for yourself and quality and, qu and think about it from a quality perspective. Are you sitting down with your coworkers? Are you sitting down with your family and thinking about how to manage the holidays? Um, talking about wellness, what's possible, and bringing healthy foods to potluck. Um, express yourself, talk to your loved ones, family, or, um, saying if you're feeling overwhelmed and ha asking the, your, your partners and your family, you know, giving them the opportunity to help one another. So these are sort of a way, ways to have a healthier holiday, you know, coming up with some goals, spending less money, taking care of yourself, having parties in January, thinking about meditation, yoga, mindfulness, they all work and they're all terrific, serving your community and trying to have more meaningful holidays and thinking about giving yourself grace. No, nobody's perfect. Um, how can we help each other? Working together um, is more fun and, you know, it really helps streamline what we all have to do. So the, this is our, our this is our group in Workplace Mental Health Solutions. We'd be glad to help work with you on other projects. This is our email and these are some references. And I, Sean has my slides, so feel free to, you know, uh, provide them to all those who would like them. So thank you very much. And I'll turn it over to you, Sean. Perfect. Uh Thank you so much, Dr. Reba. I think uh, you touched on a, a couple of points, just a couple of shout outs for a couple of comments we got in. I think one person recognized that as a mom, creating the magic of the holidays is like a full time job in itself. And it creates a ton of stress as well as uh, if you're dealing with things like extra work or seasonal affective disorder. So uh, we heard you uh, understood. Thanks, Dr. Reba covered that. And then we had another one, sadly, shared that it's very difficult because uh, the person had lost their mother. So they tend to deal with a lot of grief through the holidays. And I'm so glad that you brought that up because we sort of miss that from time to time that for many, you know, you're you're kind of bubbling up a whole lot of emotions that normally throughout the year maybe not be uh, so, you know, so prevalent. And then thank you to whoever shared that report on whole healthcare. I appreciate that. And then the question we got in, 
Uh, I'll start it off, but I'll kick it over to you, Dr. Reba. But somebody had asked, uh, they are a person that's always called into work and said, I have some kind of physical health problem. And what they really mean is, uh, what the truth is, is that they have a mental health problem. And they're scared to say that. So they're kind of asking of uh, what should or could they be doing to just be honest with their employer about, hey, I need a mental health day. I'm having a challenge. I think uh, my answer is this is part of the attacking stigma that we're trying to accomplish and that some, so many of us are scared to say it out loud and I'm not sure every employer is ready to hear it. So I think what's really about making sure that we have that open and honest communication within our workplaces to the extent that we can uh, uh, certainly do what you need to do to take care of yourself. And, I, you know, I never encourage anybody to lie, but if that's the way you feel you need to do it to take care of yourself, do what you got to do. You know, so uh, Dr. Reba, I mean, that's kind of what I see there, right? Yeah. And, you know, that's why I started off by saying that the absences are often unreported regarding people taking off for mental illness. I think it's about trust. Uh, people, uh, managers and and um and owners of organizations are not allowed to discriminate against you because of mental health issues. With that said, though, many people feel uh, that they might be discriminated against or pushed out. And, um, you know, if the company, if, if they take off too many mental health days. But I can tell you, we have looked at, you know, data about pharmacy, you know, the the number one and number two drugs that are being sold or, you know, filled in the United States are, you know, anti-cholesterol drugs and antidepressants. So, so, so many of us um, have mental health conditions. And so it's important, as Sean was saying, to decrease the stigma about it so that having a mental health problem like depression and anxiety, which is so prevalent, it's just like having any other uh, condition. It's a medical condition. It's treated like a medical condition in, in health centers and hospitals. Um, and it just may take a little bit longer for us. You know, I know growing up, I'm a little old and, you know, cancer was like that years and years ago. It's very stigmatizing to have cancer. And now it's not. And, you know, we're through public health campaigns, having stars, celebrities talk about their mental health, um, having people, having opportunities like what we're doing today to discuss it, hopefully will decrease stigma over a period of time. But I, I think the person who asked this question, I applaud you for asking it. I think it's, you know, we wouldn't, it's great that you're asking that and acknowledge and know that it's, it's a, that's a stigma that for, of others, you don't have it, but others may have it. And, you know, um, talking to um, therapists about it, to your family about it, to um, co-workers who understand this may be the beginning. And, you know, if you if you feel that you can trust your employer, it's a good idea to talk about it. And you might be surprised that the employer might be very, very open and able to help you uh, with, help you more with your mental health condition. So yeah, thank I like you for that. Asking that question. I like that too. And that, that thinking about that stigma of cancer, right? Like, uh, if you have cancer, you are not cancer. You're a person that's dealing with cancer, right? It's a condition that you're dealing with, a medical condition that you're dealing with that doesn't define you. And the same is true with anxiety and depression. These are things that you're dealing with that, that does not define you, make you less or anything else, but we treat it so much different. If I go, if I call in with a broken arm, everybody goes, hey, oh, yeah, I get it. But if you say, uh, my mind's not going to function today, like we just kind of sort of ignore that. Um, and, there's thing, one of, and there's one other yeah. thing. There are lots of professions where there's a, even a higher rate of depression and anxiety. So, you know, if you're in that, feel like journalists there's a lot of depression and anxiety police officers firefighters uh, medical personnel people who are on assembly lines you know there are many uh, special professions where there's a higher rate of this and so you know i hope that in in, in the various organizations that you deal with sean you know 
there's more more uh, discussion, more Q and A, more more talks about this because really each each profession has to deal with it in different ways. Great closing question. Um, we talked a lot about stress today. As Dr. Reba knows, we did a lot early on around brain science and what stress does to your brain. So definitely check that out because that's going to be happening to you as the stress increases uh, throughout the holidays. But uh, the last question here is sort of a two-parter, but I think you can put it together. How do we help build more resiliency rather than turning to prescription medications? Is it true that like other health conditions like cholesterol, we need to fix the underlying issue rather than just treat the symptoms? Yeah, I don't like, you know, I don't like pushing pills. I don't like, I like trying to start with the basic basic concepts like are you sleeping are you exercising are you eating healthy what's going on with your family children you know elderly parents partners you know are you socializing uh, how much screen time and you know so i think if you go through this what's really healthy for you and a prevention model for you and your family and your coworkers we are all much better off than having to treat the illness. It's much better for us to prevent this and, you know, nip it in the bud and, you know, get healthy as a society. So I hope yeah, that helps. Absolutely. I love it. I know for myself personally, just sharing with everybody, I have to do physical exercise or my mental health declines really, really quickly. So if I'm not keeping up with my routines, I always, I half jokingly, I tell people, if you say, hey, Sean, when's the last time you exercised? And I tell you a month ago, I'm in trouble. And I tell people that so they know that that means even though I look fine, something's going on with me. So I have to keep that going in nutrition. And depending on whatever's going on with you, uh, there, you know, get the therapy, get the help, get the support that you need. Because people like Dr. Reba, like she said, are not trying to push pills. They're going to try to give you the other tools to help you relieve some of those uh, those issues and kind of move in a better direction. So those tools are out there, but that's another stigma we have to attack is people asking for help because it's there and it can help you kind of function in that way without necessarily getting to medications for sure. Uh, that's about all the time we have for today. I appreciate everybody hanging over for a couple minutes. Dr. Reba, thank you so much for this wonderful information presentation. We have a, a fun but challenging period in front of us over the next couple of months, and I hope you all found it helpful and we look forward to seeing you next month where I believe we're going to be talking with Michael Stack about how movement uh, can help us all with our mental health and how you can incorporate that into your workday. So thank you all again and we'll see you next month. And happy holidays.